So hi, everyone. Uh, so welcome to uh, the third part of our trilogy of uh, films uh, around um, the Legs, uh, Why Legs Matter campaign. Um, so here we're going to um, provide some more information uh, around early interventions, um, what, how these legs, uh, leg issues can, can escalate. Um, so Hayley, do you want to um, take us through the kind of interventions that pharmacy can make and give us some kind of background information? Uh, definitely. So um, having um, a, you know someone be able to go into a pharmacy and say that they have a problem with their, their lower leg can be the difference between a wound or some swelling on the leg becoming acute to chronic. So that's the, for me, that's the biggest important thing. And I know previously, Matt, I think you said in the previous film that you do develop relationships with, you, you know, the public that come in. And I think that it can be a very open conversation. You know, you do talk, oh, how's your mum? You're picking up the tablets. Then they'll have that little, oh, she's got some swelling she developed or she knocked her leg yesterday. And so this is important because those little conversations could be the difference between nothing happening and harm to some early intervention happening and stopping, you know, the patient suffering, the financial burden for the patient and, and healthcare, um, and a wound from becoming acute to chronic. So, um, uh... I can add to that, Sanjay, and um, what I could do now is I'll share my screen and uh, and just take people through a very, very simple sort of explanation about this, really, is why are we bothered? So um, uh, I'm co-chair of uh, Legs Matter Coalition, and um, so it's, it's great, again, to be collaborating uh, with the National Pharmacy Association. So I'm just presenting uh, a colleague's uh, presentation, Anna, and uh, hopefully um, we'll be doing a more in-depth one with the NPA uh, further down the line. But this is all about early intervention. And so we've already talked about the, the surprising fact that legs are more of a problem than we realised. And, um, and this is about the, the work we can do to, in an acute situation, or it, it can be quite a small wound, but a new acute wound, um, and stopping it from deteriorating. So this is a very simple presentation about why the legs, uh, why our legs give us problems. So um, we've got venous and lymphatic return. You will have done some of this um, from your own uh, studies um, when people are becoming um, uh, qualifying as pharmacists but it's just very straightforward really we're upright and so in order for us to support our, our venous return we have two significant mechanisms one is an ankle <laughs> that uh, pumps our blood uh, back up through the foot pump and the calf muscle pump this is really important because if either of them fail then um, blood uh, basically doesn't go up efficiently and when blood is not going up efficiently, the veins are not returning their blood from the foot um, back up to the heart, then swelling develops or skin changes. You don't always have to have swelling, actually. You can have quite skinny legs that are still not working as well as they should be. And so the walking, uh, when you see people come in, is because it's very important to watch people walk, actually. You need to have the heel strike and um, uh, and the, to, um, wrote, um, to manage the uh, flexion at the ankle to work the calf muscle and the foot pump. And so you also have important valves within the veins and the lymphatics to stop back flow. So when the um, uh, venous return is not as good as it can be, either through sedentary occupations um, people's mobility going down significantly with arthritis and other conditions. When you've got um, obesity, where the impact of basically the, the weight on the abdomen and the femoral uh, veins, um, we have backflow. 
down uh, through the veins and you will see edema or skin changes. So it's very important to, to have the uh, calf muscle pump working. So I said that we're humans and we stand uh, predominantly and the impact of gravity is, is a problem. Um, we manage it through walking and we manage that downward pressure through our calf muscle pump and our ankle mobility. But when people are shuffling or walking in slip-ons and they're not properly walking um, uh, with a good heel strike, um, then the impact of gravity takes its toll on the lower leg. And, um, and one of the things is, is that as humans, our skin is quite soft and the superficial veins um, are under quite a lot of pressure, but they're not contained well enough in our soft skin. So um, gravity um, has an impact on wounds on the lower leg. So we know that um, when you have a wound on the lower leg or a surgical wound or a traumatic wound or any wound, in the ankle sort of we call it gator so it's ankle to um, calf area healing reduces it always does it just does because it's on the leg and you could have a skin tear on the arm or a skin tear on the leg and you can get bet your bottom dollar that the leg will create non-healing and more of an ulcer um, than the arm wound and so this is just really important for us to understand. So there's a few things there about the impact um, of gravity is also, of course, made worse um, by other conditions, obesity, um, increasing age, and so on. But the fixed ankle is very, very important in um, uh, impacting on your venous return. And so there's a lot of um, good evidence now that compression counteracting the impact of gravity is incredibly important. Very simple. It's not some fancy thing. It's not a digital, um, I don't know, app. <laughs> Unfortunately, it'd be really nice if it was. But the compression socks are incredibly good at counteracting this pressure of uh, gravity. So the the other thing to understand is you will be selling over-the-counter flight socks, okay? And you will be selling other um, and prescribing for people um, or uh, providing, uh, fulfilling the prescription of class one, class two, class three, um, hosiery. There's loads of different types of compression and bandages and so on. And what people don't always really appreciate is that this is a therapy the same way as medicine is a therapy and compression is a therapy and it counteracts venous hypertension swiftly. It works fast. And so it also reduces edema and it aids healing and varicosities are reduced. The other thing about it is it's anti-inflammatory. And that's a really important term to use now with hosiery. It's not just a compression, it's therapeutic compression and it reduces pain. Now it seems an odd thing to say that if you put a sock on or a bandage when you've got an open wound, right, that people go, oh, I don't, I don't think so. But it really is anti-inflammatory. So it reduces pain and it reduces, if people have got skin staining from the venous hypertension, it dulls it. It reduces the inflammation associated with that. So even when you've had someone who's had cellulitis, um, skin infection that has had maybe even several doses of antibiotic, again, people go, that leg is too painful for compression. I can guarantee they need to find a solution that includes compression so that it provides that anti-inflammatory effect to reduce the pain associated with cellulitis and reduce the exudate associated with cellulitis. So it's it's a fantastic compression as a product in its enormous number of forms is incredibly important. And because it's always like been here, people don't really appreciate it 
for the power that it has. So know more about socks and compression is really, really important. So um, in the previous um, film, um, Haley talked about the, the way that knowing more about the patient's journey and trying to get in early is really important. So here's some pictures here of wounds that actually um, could have developed into leg ulcers. And leg ulcers are terribly destructive for people's lives and they're incredibly costly for the health service. But a laceration like you've got on the right hand side here, if it's not managed, will start to drip and it will excoriate the, the skin and, and become a leg ulcer. But you may only see the small beginning of a laceration, but that's where it's heading if it doesn't have the right treatment. So what we're trying to talk about is, is signposting people early, helping the customer to understand their need for compression, and they need to get the help that they need. And Legs Matter has a lot of information about this type of wound, getting help early. And it also includes surgical wounds. Now, I have to say, um, uh, plastic surgeons are, are not always that knowledgeable about compression. But um, when people have had flap surgery and so on, um, they may have had surgery that saved their leg, but they've got a lot of edema because all the veins and lymphatics have been disrupted. They need to have compression on. And it's about knowing a little bit more about why the leg needs something different than the arm or an abdomen wound and knowing um, who to refer to, just raising awareness about that. So prevention and management of early issues is um, prevention is better than cure. So lower limb wound plus addressing plus compression therapy is excellent for healing. It's quite simple. We know a lot about that and um, it's been done for years, um, but um, uh, it needs to be done more. So we talked a little in the last um, film about what are the red flags. So we know that there are um, some that we just need to be aware of. But often if people are able to put on a compression sock, a flight sock, you know, often people have sold that without sorting out any red flags, which is interesting, isn't it? People are given, you know, they can just buy it from boots at an airport, you know, and no one double checks whether they're suitable for it. Because usually what we're relying on is someone knowing their leg and feeling their leg. If they had significant diabetes where they've got terrible neuropathy and they've had foot ulcers in the past, that may be a red flag for um, without, we're putting on a compression sock, a class one without uh, an assessment. We know that if someone has an acute infection and it's not being managed yet, then I would avoid trying to get a stock on in that situation. We're also looking at um, uh, if you've got um, poor arterial uh, circulation to the point where it's critical, that's where, we're, where we would be concerned. And so basically, it's about a few questions that you may need to ask at the counter, but and knowing who to escalate to and talking to the pharmacist. So the take home messages um, are leg, location makes a difference to the wound. If it's on the lower leg, it will heal way more slowly and may even deteriorate to the point of a horrendous ulceration. E is about escalating. It's about escalating to the local GP, the, G, um, the general practice nurse, um, um, hospital if, if you're very concerned about what you're seeing. And G is about great compression or give compression, actually, I think would be a better term, but it's about giving compression to the leg and knowing fundamentally that a leg wound is at risk of non-healing and of really creating havoc for the person and their relatives and the health system. And so I think there would be a few questions that we would ask for the medicine counter assistant and when they need to ask the pharmacist uh, for advice. And so it is on the leg. 
speak to the pharmacist, get the pharmacist to ask a few questions. I think uh, Sanjay, you'll be asking us about that. Making sure they have an appropriate dressing. Um, and if they need repeat dressings, then you'll be referring to the uh, GP um, practice nurse. About you are able to give people a flight sock or a class one sock um, and uh, and refer on. And, and as I said about signposting. So um, I think what I'll do then is I'll unshare um, Sanjay and then we can just discuss some of these issues. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Alison. That was incredibly informative. Uh, that's definitely one of my General Pharmaceutical Council CPD revalidations <laughs> sorted out. I'll be going off and writing that one up in a minute. Um, so um, I guess one of the things that occurs to me, I, I guess classically we're in the pharmacy, we think, oh, we're, we're kind of thinking, right, so it's the high, those high-risk patients, the diabetic patients. But perhaps from what I'm hearing, that's not necessarily the case. I don't know. I mean, Hayley, have you got any thoughts on that? <laughs> um, so definitely not, although obviously, as Alison showed, there are some red flags that you look out for. Mm -hmm. Really, just the words on the leg, spelling and wound, should, you should be thinking about those patients going into your British standard ho uh, class one hosiery or, you know, your sort of flight sock. Sometimes it isn't, well, a lot of the time, actually, it isn't those high-risk patients. We've had patients in clinic of, uh, you know, a 19-year-old that fell down some steps that got a laceration, um, you know, uh, an 18-year-old that sort of got a bit of a burn uh, on a leg from a quad bike, that then the, the burn didn't heal and it turned into a, an ulceration. So it, it's not just really the, for me, the big message to pharmacists is don't always wait until you think, oh, this patient's high risk, they might develop. It can be anyone. It can be a young person that's had a fall. And, you know, we've all, again, as Alison showed on, on the presentation, we've all, um, we're all partial to gravity, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, so legs, <laughs> anything on the leg, just think, you know, it, it applies to everybody. And so there was that slide around um, uh, dressing plus compression equals healing. So what do you to, to think about the kind of stuff that pharmacies would normally keep in away? Um, yeah. Plus what we might want to be keeping, actually thinking about this a little bit more. So in terms of things pharmacies should stock and in terms of the OTC purchases, um, what do you think would would be the appropriate things for us to stock and, and be looking to sell? I think the simple dressings is only required. I mean, nurses tend to go towards the sort of foam adhesive dressings, but for a wound on the lower leg, if you have got the stock on, you shouldn't really need that. And you also don't want it to get too wet in the dressing. So for me, if someone was self-managing, I would just use um, a, a, a pad and, um, you know, I, I probably shouldn't use any names, so I'm thinking, I can't think what the, the generic name is, but a simple dressing such as stop pour, me pour, those sort of things. Other products are available. Um, so that sort of thing, because then they're self-managing it, they can have a shower. People often think you mustn't get it wet. You can have a shower, pat it dry, put a dressing on, put the sock on. And then they keep they are monitoring it. And if it's getting any worse or it's getting um, eczematous, there may be a different dressing. Um, but it can just be a simple wound pad um, that is just placed on the leg, sock up, and then you don't have any adhesives at all. So... Um, for me, it's at this level, simple, simple, simple. Shower, hat dry, simple dressing. I don't know, Hayley, if you would agree with that or not. Yeah, I do. I think sometimes you just, the, the more simple you keep it as well, the more the patient can remember and follow those steps. Yeah. I think when you start getting technical, um, 
and I, I know uh, definitely Alison <laughs> would definitely agree. It's not, you know, you could have the most fuzzy dressing in the world, but what's going to be the main help to heal that wound is getting that sock on and that bit of compression. Yes, it is. And and I think um, often people think, and this is, could be why wound care has such a low profile and leg care, because um, there's a sort of an ageism associated with it, a sort of an acceptance that older people will have non-healing wounds. What can you do? You know, but actually um, they're not in compression or they may be in compression, but it's ineffective and they still got soggy legs. If that's the case, if the, if the exudate is not being managed in their compression, uh, their bandaging regime, whatever's being provided, um, then it's suboptimal. It's, it's, you know, we, we have to think of compression as a dose. And so if someone had, if you, if you had someone said, I've got um, a headache and you said, what are you using? Paracetamol. And they said, I only take one every eight hours because I don't like them. Right. Then you go, well, it, that's probably why it's not helping because it's suboptimal. It's not enough. And we see the same thing with compression. It's used a little bit. A little bit is better than none. Well, not always, <laughs> you know, because it has to be therapeutic at a therapeutic level. It has to be a dose for that leg. And the other thing that we haven't put in this is about the height of people. So if you think about gravity, if someone was six foot four, then they need more compression. And so they may have um, a more of a problem than shorter people. So that's something else to sort of think about as a, as a pharmacist, you know, long legs, they need more compression. And, and then the other thing is that often when we look at who are the non-healers in, in a community, they are more often than not, there's more men. More women have leg wounds, but more men are the non-healers. Why is that? Because they, they're late to present. We know this, don't we? That men will sort of look after themselves for a longer time before asking for help. So we've got these other contributory factors that you as pharmacists would know about, right? You would be running campaigns about different things simply because you know your community. So there are a few things in here that is useful to know about um, for your community. Thank you. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's an, yeah, really important point, actually. So in terms of that and, and how we can make these early interventions, how do you envisage like the whole pharmacy team kind of engaging with this and, and being involved? So the counter, medicines counter assistants, the pharmacists, how do you envisage everyone can get involved? Um, I, d I don't know. I think for me, I, I might throw that back to you, Sanjay. Um, as saying, how do, how do you think you can manage this in a busy pharmacy where you've already got various targets, pharmacy first and everything else? What is it that you can do as a team? Is is the one best thing, as Hayley was saying, just it's about the leg. You know, if people just go, oh, it's about the leg, it's on the leg. That's the red flag mm -hmm. <laughs> straight away. It's on the leg. And then other things flow from that. And, and I suppose... If you as a pharmacist were able to, um, you know, tap into these um, films, um, maybe there's some additional training we can do, short, sharp, 10-minute um, um, slots on uh, additional information that you think would be useful. Other people can ask, ask us, what well, you know, what would pharmacies uh, like to know about? What is it that they need additional training in? Um, you all have consulting rooms now. Is there something that we can do to support the use of those and um, the, the use of over-the-counter products um, that support your business as well? You know, we understand the pressures on people. So uh, I'd be delighted to hear how we can be of help, how your local TVNs can be of help. And that's the other thing I would say is that there's a lot of TVNs, uh, sorry, tissue viability nurses now in areas that are keen to um, work across the community more and look at early intervention. I think if anyone made contact with their local services, I think they would have a listening ear and people would be absolutely delighted. 
yeah so 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 you're thinking about throwing it back to me so i guess i envisage um so by definition when people walk into a pharmacy the first person they most of the time they'll talk to will be the medicines counter assistant and so within pharmacy the medicines counter assistants you know we've got the sales of medicines protocol and the two wham stuff and so i guess um and, and within that there's the the bit where as the medicines counter assistants start um a conversation and start seeing that um oh it's something we need to refer to the pharmacist so that's the first opportunity so within the sales of medicines protocol it's almost as as you say oh it's a wound on the leg I sh as a medicines counter assistant i need to go and get the pharmacist and then uh, i think it's about the pharmacist utilizing the the learning that's come out of um you know these these films uh to then kind of think about um yeah you know, what's the appropriate dressing and, and how the is saying take our messages probably keep it fairly simple really be aware of all the red flags uh but yeah if appropriate simple dressing and compression um so utilizing the existing um protocols that we've got within the pharmacy um i think that's the way to kind of uh rather than us thinking oh gosh here's here's more burden yes, here's more don't stuff. need anything new yeah exactly yeah, exactly. yeah. brilliant okay. so that's been incredibly helpful um so thank you very much um as the national pharmacy association we're going to be further engaging uh, with the legs matter campaign um these videos will be available uh, through the MPA website and uh, you know, we'll think about how we can also promote it through our social media and uh, our members' WhatsApp groups. Uh, but uh, there'll be more stuff that we'll do and we'll put out more resources as well. So thank you ever so much. Thank you, it's been fabulous. Thank you very much, it's been great conversations.